Good evening. We are now entering the, uh, the last uh, session for today for the American 14-1 Straight Pool Championship. We have uh, eight players left. Max Fleischer from Austria plays Ruslan Chinhoff from Russia. Thorsten Holland of Germany and Jacksonville, Florida plays Alvin Ocean of Austria. Marco Teuscher of New Zealand plays Del David al Qaeda of Spain. And here on the live stream table, Yanni Sikinen of Finland is playing well-known Alex Pankerlein Originally from the Philippines, today Alex lives in Toronto. No, it should be an interesting match. Yanni went undefeated in the uh, round robin session and has won uh, two straight games in the knockout. So Yanni is 8 and 0 at this point. I believe that Alex lost only one match so far. So uh, this should be exciting. Uh, Alex. Tagger Lion is well known to all of us. Just a great character, a great player, winner of the 2004 World Nine Ball Championship, winner of the 2005 U.S. Open Nine Ball Championship. And Alex has been a, a real solid supporter of this uh, small 14-1 specialized tournament for a long time. Alex, thank you very much. Let's have a hand for a great little play. Yanni, Yanni Sikin hails from Helsinki, Finland. Uh, I don't know if under the influence of Mika, but he's certainly a terrific player uh, and has been coming here for some number of years now. Um, and and uh, his third time in our tournament. So welcome, Yanni. And I'm going to ask Yanni to uh, read for us his sponsors because they're Finnish names that I don't want to butcher. So Yanni, come on up and tell us a little bit about some of the folks that uh, sponsor you. Okay, so this is ABC for Finnish language. So first, Jasalta. Uh, what? Then Swan and Billy will be doing this. Uh, Brown, Charles and Tips, Texas, Finland, Massachusetts, and uh, Swan Helsinki and Halberi Asenko. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. easy for you to say. Okay, guys, uh, let me get this stuff off the table. Everyone else, let's light for break, and good luck to everyone. Yeah, you too. All right, guys, just uh, welcome back. A little announcement there from... Uh, Peter Burroughs, the tournament director. I don't think I've ever, ever seen anyone light with the cue ball before. Yeah, well, I think you're, you're probably not supposed to, right? No, yeah. no one, neither one's supposed to have a cue ball. So, uh, so that's a foul, and that'll be assessed 16 points to... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Johnny, They're accepting it. Yeah, Johnny uh, wins the lag there. So for those of you who are new to this event, you can tell, you know, the level of detail and effort that goes into setting up and running this event. Uh, Peter Burroughs has announced all the matches, and we got a pretty good shot of the, you know, the trophies that are going to be available there. Oh, you hit this break pretty good. Yeah, I did. Wouldn't you say there, Danny? Uh, yeah, that's a tough one. I think... Uh, I think he's going to have trouble thinning either side of the rack to play a counter safety. So if you guys are just tuned in, uh, you're watching BSN, the Billiard Sports Network, in the booth right now. I'm Jake Lawson, along with my partner Josh Setterfield, and we're joined uh, with some guest commentary by Danny Baruti, one of the great minds of 14-1.
So welcome, Danny. Thank you very much. How you doing, guys? Excellent. Man, it's been a it's been a great week so far. What's the problem with that shot? Yeah, he's not going to like this. I don't think. He's going to leave an open shot here for Alex. Pretty big angle. I don't know if he can hold it. And make it. Yeah, that's make a, a break. That's a it. good point. He could play it in and miss the rack and play a counter safety. What would you like to do here? No, you overcut it, yeah. go around the rack, and leave the cue ball back up the table. There you go. If you make it, you make it. You just don't want to hang it up. Or he could just kick it to the other side. I really don't think he can uh, cut this in and hold it at that distance. It's not too much stuff. It is. All right, this looks like it's going to be a long game. Does anybody want to order sandwiches <laughs> or something? <laughs> yeah, a couple of safety battles back and forth. Looks like Johnny will play another safety here. Just chips the ball up, brings the cue ball back around. So, Danny, obviously uh, you played in this event. Uh, we're now down to what, a... 12 players, is that right? I think eight. Eight players. Who do you like left? Uh, everybody that's left has been playing super. There's, there's no, there's no, uh, can't pick anyone. 150 point game. There's been a lot of good games here. Anybody in the area should come down and watch the remaining sessions. Uh, the, uh, Thorsten's playing great. And Alex is before. There, there are no weak matches. The cream has risen to the top. Hey, Danny, try to move this in just a little bit closer. There we go. I could actually right. put it on my molars if you want to real close. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be a little loud. There we go. Chat, let us know how that sounds. A okay. couple audio adjustments. Everything should be looking good. Sound good. Should be good. Right. Well, let's see how his, uh, his billiard knowledge is now. Think he's going to go two rails or just try and draw right back? What do you guys think? Oh, this is tough. I think two. Yep. Oh, no. But look at this. Mm. Gets away with it a little bit, I think. I'll have a pastrami sandwich. <laughs> what do you get? <laughs> <laughs> Tables have been playing great here. The pool room's very nice. This is my, f my first trip down here. Oh, really? I wouldn't mind coming back to this venue. And uh, I'm usually against this these events in pool rooms. These tables played perfectly. It was really nice, and the staff is friendly. Yeah, they had um, the felt replaced on these. Eric Moore came out and uh, did all the table work for him, made sure everything was playing good. Uh, they tend to take pretty good care of the equipment here. I'm, I'm blessed to live four or five miles down the road, so it's actually my home pool room. Did you play in the event? I did not get to run all this fun stuff. Oh. He's looking to see if something's dead. Maybe the seven ball. Can't tell from here. No. Ooh. Well, he's going to take one. No damage. He just didn't need his Wheaties today. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even try and play a legal safe here. You either bury him in or push the cue ball back to the rail. I didn't like that safe. Because now he can play off the eight, go down and come back up. Danny, go ahead and say something for me while I get this audio set up. Oh, no, brown cow. That should sound a little better. Oh, 
Ooh. Came up just a little bit short on the rail there. Try to hide the cue ball from the one so he can't play safe off of it and take the scratch. Don't even try to play a legal safe here. Push it up near the two, but not near the rack. Just take that edge away from the one ball. See, that's a wasted shot. Now he's got an easy return safe. Can't lay it up on the side like that against the ball. He'll just nip this and come right back in there, right? I think you go down to the rail and leave it there. Let him worry about uh, about going to the rack. Short again. Is he on two fouls now? Sure is. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's not bad, though. He didn't leave anything, and that's the most important thing. No, that's oh, the seventh one, I Alex. Think that's three. No, you got to call fouls. him. You have to. Yeah. It, ha it has to be in sequence. I don't think it was his third in a row. Knowing the rules is overrated if you only miss two balls all week. <laughs> so the rule is uh, you have to notify the uh, incoming player when he's on two right before he shoots. Not after he commits the foul, but right before he shoots the third shot. Now, is the, is, is the purpose uh -huh. of letting your opponent know just to eliminate the chance of there being a dispute on whether or not they were actually on two fouls or not? Yeah, also there would normally be a referee keeping scores, but we don't have that, so referees don't have to announce it. When, when there are referees, you don't have to announce it. Makes perfect sense. Sometimes several racks can go by, and the player can still be on two. So it's a way of reminding them. Yeah, so I, I think we did have, he w it actually was three in a row. Oh. And, uh, but Alex didn't tell him that he was one of two. That's a very good shot he just made. Yeah, very good. So we've just had a total eclipse of the sun here. Oh, that was, <laughs> <laughs> that was Yanni standing in front of the camera. This is the first time I've seen this many balls up table this early into the rack. A little safety battle, kicking them out there. I don't think he could see the two. Something's dead. He called two on the side. He's going to come two rails behind this two and kick it over. Is this a joke? Did he take a Chris Get Mullen pill shot. today or something? Wow. What was, was that? Great. Send it right back in the stack. Keeps trying shots like that. He's not going to be here long. No. Just say he just had a tough one with Darren Appleton. It's pretty close there towards the end. Yeah, he was swinging for a little two-way action there. If it goes in, I called it. If not, well, I mean, uh, what, I don't think the, the cue ball goes by the 13 ball down here. I, I don't think it does either. So he's he's called the five here. Yeah, this is not the toughest combination.
13 to break him up. That's what he's going to do. He's going to try and set up for the 13. Yeah, this will be good too. Because that's going to lend nice to create some, some movement here. So this is going to be the first opportunity we've seen for a, a good run here. Yeah, play the one ball and come straight back up the table. Yeah, he got there. Kill the cue ball on this shot. He give it a medium stroke and pretty much get the action on the whole rack. Don't have to slam it either. Yeah, do you like uh, trying to hit the three ball full or kind of like grazing across the, no, the front I of them? that cue ball moving. See, that's that cross side thing. You get cross side action when you hit it hard like that. It comes across the top of the rack and cross side, there's a scratch there. Gotcha. That, that, that's not an uncommon scratch. No, oh, he's got a problem on the three and the, uh, what is that, the eight, seven ball? Yeah, seven, three and the seven down here. So he's got to address that. That's pretty critical. tried to do it right away. Yeah, I was wondering. Might have been too big. That 11, it's barely off on that combo. I was wondering if he's going to have to move those two or... Gets a second swing at it. Here we go. Yeah. He may not have a shot here. Might be a little too close to the three. You know, if we had a camera right now, we'd see him standing there, kind of banging the bottom of a stick on the floor. That kind of suggests that... Uh, so we're back in Safesville. What do you do here in this position? Uh, you take a scratch or two, definitely. You try and see if the opponent is going to do something wrong. This is very hard. It might be. It might actually be correct to take three fouls here. I don't know if the eleven is dead. Like so, if you were able to get the ball frozen to the long rail up there, you can't leave a long shot. But even if you did. Might leave the 11. I think the 11 is going to come up short. I yeah, was, I was look looking like at that earlier. Yeah, it does look like it's hitting the short rail. This is going to be. I don't think he's going to be able to do this. Let's see how, how they lay. Yep, that's a good shot. Good shot. Now the 8, I don't think, goes in the side. Mm-hmm. So in this instance, like earlier you were saying, it might be better to, you know, go ahead and take the three foul. Yeah. So it would be, in certain situations, it would be better to walk back the points because you're not giving your opponent a chance to go on a long run. Yeah, absolutely. Each, each one of these games means finite. You can lose your route. Yeah. So every shot becomes sacred. It becomes critical. Here we push the eight. I, 
that, that would be a test. Well, he tried to shut that's not unreasonable. There would have been a big war. Yeah. Well, he got away with it. He lost the one tough shot. I don't think, even know if he could make the egg for man. Nah. Mm-hmm. Nah. Mm-hmm. And it's very hard to uh, shoot that egg away. You don't want to make it a clean hit. Yeah, it's uh, the exact shot Alex was talking about before the match started about what wouldn't, wouldn't be considered legal. So it's a good thing they had that conversation. <laughs> Well, he might have a three rail safe here if he can fit the eight shooting over the 11 and make a three rail safe. So just leave the queue up. up in the upper right hand corner of the screen because the 15 10 are blocked and the 7 3 are both difficult shots. He might even want to lag it there. He's taking the loose balls out of play by jamming them up. That's mm-hmm. smart. That's a real heads up play. He's not worried about the loss of the point. Not concerned about playing a legal safe. That's a good save. Now you see, now that's that upper right-hand corner of the table. He needs it to get there, though. Of course, he did leave the eight ball. That was the, that's the only difference. So if you can't leave no shot, leave a long shot. That's the part that's astonished me so far this week is how players can switch gears between the offense and defense so quick. I mean, some of these guys, you watch them sit in a chair for 30 minutes and they walk up and make a nine-foot yeah. cut, and it's like, what? Well, that's why they're here right now. Exactly. They're able to do that. So I guess you got to make this and swing around, for, try to hit the 10-15. Hmm. Found the gap. Still going to have access to the three ball here. Yeah, but you, you see, you got to deal with the 10 15. It, it would have been great if he had hit the uh, the 10 15. I don't even know if he was playing. It kind of looked like he was trying to, trying to hit the three or something. This is a much tougher shot than the eight was. He's got to float this ball down. Yeah, if he wasn't so close to the rail, he could dig into that three a little bit and nudge those balls, but I don't. I don't know if he wants to elevate like that. Is he going for the seven instead? I th- he might be. I think if he has the seven, it's the right shot. That was a great shot. Oh, look at that. Terrific shot. Okay, so I, th- I say he plays the 11 and then the, uh, and then the four ball. Then you pick up the 15 in the side, shoot the 10, and use the 7 in the side for the break, leaving the cue ball where the 10 is now. So that's that's my choice for the next four shots, 11, 4, 15, 10. Now with all your straight pull knowledge that you have, what would, what would you recommend to all the people watching right now that it would be like the go-to break shot? I mean, obviously having the ball here is going to yeah. be what we've seen the most all weekend long, but like what's the next best option? Well, the next best option would be the 7 side because it also there's a question of what you can get to like you'd like to keep the 11 but you can't shoot the four it's just too too tough a shot oh he's got he the seven in the side i didn't know one past the 15. i think he called the 10. well the seven oh, he's playing it so cross side yeah look at that well he juked both of us yeah that's not the right shot you think he did that because he's trying to preserve he's the trying, 11 as his break so shot so hard to preserve the 11. Yeah, he did that. So he's forcing his pattern around wanting that yeah. ball instead of taking what the table was giving him. Absolutely. The, the seven in the side, using the ten as a key ball, was was a very good break shot. There's no reason to pass on it, to take a bank shot. The other way, the eleven and the four were hangers. The fifteen looked like it was easy. The ten would have been easy. That was a very risky play. Well, 
Let's see how tough that 15 was. He's got a maneuver. I think he could have used a bigger angle. Now he's got to force the ball. Yeah, that 15 was a little bit of a cut into the side. I think he was scared to juice it any more than, than what he was able to put on it there. He's got to come around two rails. Low right. Oh, yeah. Great. Beautiful. Looking good. Okay. So the score should be uh, Yanni has minus one, and Alex should have a harp. What was that glockenspiel that just went off? What, what was that? <laughs> His uh, new subscribers to the YouTube channel. Oh. Uh, so uh, Alex has uh, 11. I'm going to get an update here on the score for you guys just momentarily. I had to step away for... A minute. Well, it should be 11 to minus 1. They have 5 to 4. <laughs> Alex is putting in his trick cue ball now, his mercury filled <laughs> cue ball. It's going to be it's going to be doing parabolas around the <laughs> table, <laughs> wobbling. And Where did he run off to? Well, we're one rack into the game, and Alex just took his first break. He took off with some pace, too. I don't know. I think he wanted <laughs> to clean the cue ball. There's probably a scuff mark on the ball. He couldn't get off. Some of the players are starting to get fanatical about cleaning the balls. I've, a I've actually seen a match where a ball was clean almost the other shot. Because <laughs> conditions were muggy and they felt that the balls were skidding. Yeah. Yeah, it can be tough if you're having to you know, play not just against yourself and your opponent, but also the, the conditions and the equipment. That can be tough. As we get you an update on the score here momentarily, Alex uh, took a quick break. I uh, had to step away uh, from the booth, so we'll get back. Get, uh, right now they have it shown as five for Alex and four for... John, Johnny, so. Alex came up dry on the break. Unless he has the... Uh, I don't know what that ball is. The uh, the other way. The nine ball might be dead. Oh, yeah, like a 6-12-9 into the corner six, here? 12 9 yeah. You take the 6-12-9 and then you get off at Newport Beach and you take a transfer <laughs> to the <laughs> to the ten fourteen. He really I don't really think he has anything here. I 
Yeah, this is tough here. Let you guys see Alex as he walks around the table. Tries to figure something out here. Bankaroni? Yeah, he said cross bank. Yeah. You, re you nailed it. And the three ball got enough room to get through there? Is that what he's going for? Those. Oh, he had to shorten that wow. up. He, he hit that well. I mean, just just seeing that ball was uh, was quite a thing. I guess he'll be playing for the combination on the 215, or else he's got to roll up for the four ball. So I'm pretty sure he's going to play the 13 here. Roll up for the four or play the 215. Yeah, he's he's looking at your shot right now. I don't really see. Well, you can, you can play for the four with the intention of rolling down for the 14 or the one. But there are very, f yeah, I guess that's what he's doing. He tried to get straight on it, so that's what he's playing for, to come down. Yeah, just get a little bit below yeah. the angle so you can use it to break out. Yeah. Or even you can shoot balls up table. Yeah. yeah. Guess you got to wait till you land somewhere. He might even play the one ball if he comes down enough. Play the one, you nudge the six, you loosen that up. That looks a little d risky, though. Looks like he's playing the one. He's going to draw back into the cluster. He's always killing the cue ball. A lot of the Filipino players, they, they'll always cue the stick to cue the object the cue ball very low and it's looking to control that cue ball well I guess he's playing the tenant coming around what do you think that's the only thing I'm seeing for him do you think you so he's, he's looking at your shot again. I was going to say, do you think he tries to come around far enough? Because it's lending into that shot line anyways. Yeah, he's got a safe uh, area to land in. Yep, met it. Needs to I think he wanted to be a little straighter on the shot. That makes it a little tougher. Yes, it does. I wouldn't be surprised if he passes on it and plays the six first. Goes back and forth to the middle. Let you see what Alex sees as he's standing behind this ball. Give you a real idea of what that 215 combo would look like. Yeah. It's a back cut the two. Now does the seven ball pass the 12 into this corner? Nah, he'd be d he, he would have been down shooting it by now. Here we go. Here's the combo. Yep. Close, but no cigar. <laughs> Bless you. in the area and you happen to have some uh, cough medicine, come on by. <laughs> <laughs> Danny with the jokes. Well, what well, joke? I like it. Coughing up <laughs> the booth. <laughs> he says, I don't want to get sick going on. Doing a broadcast <laughs> with a lunger. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's great. Oh, man. Right. That was a nice positional shot. Came to Took the ball that was up the table nearest them and came three rails for position. What do you like for a break shot here? The seven? Yeah, yeah if he can if he can get it into position, which I think he probably can. He's got to get rid of the two. Yeah. And he's got to get rid of the 11 and the, the 14 and the, uh, the, the 15 and the, the other stripe ball. Is yeah, you 12? got the, yeah, the 9 and the 12 here. He's got to get rid of those two before he can... Ooh, he tried, and he is rewarded uh -oh. brutally. 
He's not going to like that. Nope. Well, what do you like from here? The uh, combination on the seven in the side, or? So tough. Define like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, these side pockets have been very tough uh, all week. So, I mean, that's such a. This shot is actually yeah. harder than pronouncing his name. That's how tough it is. <laughs> right. <laughs> you were having a tough time there, Danny. <laughs> uh, it's... it's uh, then he said, can you say Seattle? <laughs> he said, that's my nickname. I'm like, wow. <laughs> very very nice guy, though, Johnny is. Well, it's too big to say otherwise. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's got a choice between a lot of horrible shots here. And he doesn't really have a good save. I mean, would it be too crazy to back cut this two ball? Yes. Oh, yeah. You don't want to let it let yeah, the cue go. The cue ball I will mean, be traveling around the table at warp factor speed. <laughs> it looks. Is he going to try to play this combo on the three ball or the five there? Oh, My he goodness. tried to play it off the back of it. Yeah. No, I think he was trying to slide under it. Slide, yeah, he was trying to slide under it. Mm. This angle is so deceiving looking into that rail, it's hard to tell how much space is actually there. Yeah. I didn't even think that was an option. But he got tagged out trying to slide into second. Well, now uh, Alex will be able to spin this ball up and pick up the 12 and the 15. I, th I think he's got a good chance to make this seven as a break shot. Of course, he can also use the two as a break shot. That's not bad either. You're right near the edge of the corner of the rack. He may not have a clear shot at the 14. Yeah, I think the I think the 5 is blocking a little bit of the ball. He called it though. Combination. There we go. It's going to come off that 15 and go up the table. <laughs> Oh, the nine ball. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Think he's going to try and set up the two for the break? I'm either feeling that or depending on how he gets positioned, being able to make the eight and bump the seven. That was a great shot he just played. Well, he's got a choice. He can... Try and play to get a shot at the uh, seven. So, uh, a shot at the eight to bump the seven out. Or he can uh, keep the two for the break shot. Right. And it answers that question. Yeah, plan to uh, get shape on the eight to bump seven. And he got it. And he's got an insurance ball down here with the 12 that after he makes the eight, nudges the seven, in case he l gets too steep on the five, he has the 12 as insurance. Three will be a good key ball. Yeah, there it is. He figured it out. See, it's the part of the game that I'm becoming very fond of. I mean, I've said so many great things about straight pool. Um, being involved in this event has has exposed me to some different aspects of the game that I just never really was uh, playing before. But I really like the the late rack patterns that you have to figure out because I kind of feel like in a lot of rotation games, your, your, your patterns are kind of decided for you. you know, there's different ways that you can go about it, but for the most part, patterns, it, it's they're rote. structured. It's a, they're rote games. Yes. Yeah. This, you get the, the freedom, and you can really see the difference in people's decision-making. They, they might be able to make the same shot, but it comes down to those split-second decisions that yeah, make or break it. Three, four balls on the table in this, this that last end pattern, mm -hmm. and he had to come up with a plan and implement it. You know, and he had a, He had several options there. 
I like it. I like it. All right, after 17 hours of play, the score is 13 <laughs> to 4. Actually, it's 17 6. Getting some responses to some people out there in the chat. Tell them to mind their business. Yeah, he should wallop this one. Yep. Nice break. Yeah. That's perfect. That's what you want to see right after the break. Now, there are five balls he can shoot at, and there's nothing to tell him which is the right shot. Mm -hmm. So in, in your early patterns like this, do do a lot of players actually try to map out the pattern for all 14 balls, or, or is there like a structure to like, hey, if you got balls on the rail, take those out first? Yeah. Well, there's a number of things. Clusters, balls on the rail. Where's the break shot? Where's the key ball to the break shot? And just work backwards from there. Yeah, you try to. Or you see, you try to assign a level of importance, which ones are critical, which ones have to be dealt with. Now, right now, he also has to deal with what's the first shot, which is the shot you can actually shoot. So I guess he's going to have to try and create a break shot from the center of the table. So he's going to look around and see if the 15 can be bumped out for the break. So he can play the two and then try and get on the... Uh oh, he's not going to play the two. Okay, he's going to try and clear a few more balls before he does it. Well, he's going to try and drive one of those uh, center balls into a better position for a break. He might be able to develop one right here. Yeah. If the nine passes the twelve, he might be able to set the twelve up for a break shot. the 11 ball here. <clears throat> now it looks like he's got an angle if he wants to take the two ball to, to bump into the 13 and 9 here. If he can get on the other side and play the 9, he could set up the... Yeah. Set up the 13 ball. Set up the 13, yeah. This this way is not clear wh where the nine's coming out for the break. Andy does have the 15 ball he could use as a break. There's... I think he, for some reason, I think he has the nine. I think he can do it. Yep, he can do it. Guys, uh, this is Jake Lawson. I'm following the chat. Bobby Hunter actually uh, is not in the booth with us. It's myself along with John Setterfield. And I Danny thought Murray. I was Bobby Hunter. <laughs> <laughs> People were asking questions for Bobby, and he's not even here. little change of mind here. So are we liking the... 13's the break. 
Yeah, for sure. And do we like the the twelve ball for the uh, cue ball here? I'm sorry, the twelve ball is the break, right? Which which one is that? Thirteen ball down there. Yeah, thirteen's yeah. close to the rack. Twelve's okay. for the side here. Yeah. Use the twelve as a key to hold for here. Uh, either one. You can either use the twelve or the fifteen. You, either one's either one's good. Is he going to clean these tables or clean the balls up table here? Um, four and the eight. He may shoot the four in this corner pocket down here. Uh, he's going to, okay, I see. Like that angle, he's got to go down and come up now. He's got a little angle on that eight, and it's. Le and it's Going away. Going away. Going the wrong way. So he's going to have to do something with the ball, which he didn't want to do. He didn't come over enough. Yeah, he, uh, as long as he doesn't end up... Well, honestly, even if he ends up too straight, he can he can draw out of this 15 and still get shape on yeah. the 12 here. So Yeah, he needs, a, he needs a workable shot. There you go. So I think I think the way the pattern ended up laying down, he just ended up changing his key ball because it really looked like he was playing around that 12 being the key. Yeah. Just takes his medicine here, makes an adjustment. This is not a big deal for him, though. Nah, not at all. Come off the rail, fat. Oh. He made it a little tougher. Yeah. Now he's got to hit it hard, and you run the risk of jamming the pocket. Yep. I'm not happy. Now he's got a little bit of a steep, really steep angle here on that 13 ball. These thin break shots. One of the one of the older players that I learned a lot from, Tommy Walter, who's a very still a very good player. He told me a long time ago, you hit these shots soft, these big cuts. You don't hit them hard. You hit them hard, you can throw the shot off. Mm. You lose control. You just spin it in. This ball should barely reach. Ooh. I like picking up the four ball first, getting it out of the way. Or, or the eight if it's easy. Clear up that mess that's down table so you don't have to take any. Uh, Does the 10 go by? Might not. Mm. I don't like this shot. I mean, it's oh, half he's a pocket. He might be going for the 14 here. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. So it looks like he's going to go ahead and take the two ball here. Got to play a six here, right, Danny? Hey, I, I, would, I would think so. I mean, it could play to 15. I don't see what that would do. So I think, yeah, by process of elim elimination. I'm trying to think what he's uh, looking to follow up with. Maybe he was looking at the combo on the 11-7. He came up really short. Oh, yeah. One of the guys in the chat asked a uh, question for you, Danny. Is Tom Walter still playing? Is he still playing pool, yeah, or is he still in the tournament? 
still playing? The answer is yes and no. Okay. He's still playing pool, but he's not no longer in the tournament. Nice. And he's playing pretty well. He's no spring chicken. And I know that because because he's 10 years older than me and I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> He got to get rid of that four ball. You don't want to leave it by itself. Uh -oh. Yeah, uh oh, I was right. <laughs> Next time, <laughs> listen to me when I tell you play the four. Doesn't want to take this shot. You see, he was just looking at the 15 ball on the side. He's really such a terrific player, Alex. He, he doesn't seem to get lat, uh, rattled. It's a good thing, though, if he pots this 15 in the side, he should be able to come up here and, and get a shot on the four ball. Now he's, well, okay, he switched it up now very quickly. Uh, just taking a look. He's got the three ball down there, which looks perfect for his break ball. He can shoot the 15 in the side, the 15 in the corner, the seven. In the, you know, there's nothing to tell you what the right shot is in this game. Right. That's a good shot. Yeah, he's right back, right back together. Dead center pocket. So Alex is going to try to play the rest of the game without shooting that four ball. Just, he's just going to refuse. He's going <laughs> to work around, <laughs> play the next rack, leave the four there. <laughs> uh, you got to come back for the 11 after this shot. going on right next to us is Dorsten Holman and Albin Ocean. Albin currently leads 75 to 8. Okay, he's going to pick up the 15. And he's going to play the 9, and then he's going to use the 12 for the key ball. Go one rail to long rail and come out. He's still not liking it. He's still standing there shaking his head. Well, he wanted to have a straight shot on it, he, but he can't shoot the other ball because he's running into the 3, and he's still got to get back for the 15. So he has to shoot this ball, whether he likes it or not. Perfect. I think he'll come back a little. See him just look and see where he wants to be at after he brings his nine ball back a little bit. So he's just going to slide it out maybe like two inches. Perfect. 
Well, he can go around the table, play a billiard into the position zone, or just try and stun it with reverse. Or maybe even some running English to let it run long. Yeah, there you go. A lot of ways to play this shot, and he just he just does it, you know. He just keeps getting there. Is that the current score? Yeah, 45? 45 to 6. We are right on the ball now. Alex on a 27 ball run, trying to string them together. Last break went pretty well for him. Let's see how this one fares. Last one he had that big angle. This one I don't think you hit hard. I don't think he will. Well, what do I know? <laughs> I just never got the hang of drawing off the, the rack like that. You just you lose the cue ball to me, and it's just not my style. Thank you, uh, Smur421, for the donation. We certainly do appreciate it. Of course, at BSN, the Billiard Sports Network, we always stream free, never pay per view. So we appreciate your support. side now it's changed his mind he got a chance to break him again it's 13 ball in the corner mm -hmm. I thought he was gonna put a little English on and try and go into the cluster because he had the 14 there for the safety he very quickly calls the four so he's gonna be shooting a six four combo here this is a good this is gonna send the six into that cluster too so this might be good for him Six and ten ball married up, didn't they? I think no, the fourteen. The fourteen and the two. Danny oh, yeah. oh, both of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Both. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Green and blue. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no tigers. <laughs> <laughs> no idea. Danny Ken from Easy Street says hello to you. Ken from Easy. Oh, hey Ken, how you doing? Just tuned into the the chat here. Ken's my parole officer. There you go. Yeah. Thanks for taking the <laughs> the ankle bracelet <laughs> off, Ken, so I can come down. <laughs> Oh gosh! Oh, that was a that was a super chat there too. Thank you for that. Uh, uh, some of the guys in Monterey, California. Ken's from uh, that's where I play at now. Oh, that's excellent. That's uh, Schmidt's room as well. He's sponsored by them. No, no? Uh, John did his high run on one of the tables there. Oh, okay. But he actually lives about 380 miles away. Oh, wow. Uh, so they, they, uh, we, I got John to, uh, I talked the owners into getting John for an exhibition up there. And from there, they decided uh, to give it a try. John came up with the idea of doing something impossible. He was, uh, they suggested he does, he does something more doable than breaking the world high run record. Like wow. hmm. going over Niagara Falls in a Dixie cup or something. <laughs> Something where you, you actually have a chance to do it. Right. Because we know it's impossible to break the Moscone high run, right? Wrong. Well. <laughs> <laughs> but he did it. Yeah, he did he it, man. He certainly did. Wow. You know, speaking of that, I, um, I, w I was out most of that year. I had a some couple of knee, knee surgeries, and I happened to go into the pool hall, and the first inning I saw him, he ran 363. Mm. Over the next two days, I saw him. I only saw three more innings, and they were another seven or 800 balls, oh. the last one being a 274. But he was hitting them perfectly. It's like he was in some kind of magical zone. Yeah, he, he found the spot. And the high run, which was a world record, which is a great achievement by anyone's standard, anytime you break a world record sure that was just the cherry on top of the cake you know it was uh all the 400s he ran yeah. and the 300s and the 200s it's like standing on top of everest okay you made it to the top but it was the climbing up that yeah that was great it took a lot of greatness to get to the point where you broke the record he really was hitting him in a special way it was really special 
appreciate that insight, Danny. All right, back at the ranch. We agreed the seven balls the break. I like it. Yeah. Ooh. I say the 10, the 8, and the 11 on the side. Then the 13 in the corner and the 6 maybe in the side or the corner. Yeah, that's a very straightforward pattern. And he's such a practical player. Alex does not get lost in uh, any fantasies. It's very direct and super controlled. Wow. Wowee. I guess he's going to play that 11. I thought he was going to play it in the side, but I guess he couldn't hold it. <laughs> <laughs> wow, he's oh, taking all a right. change of mind here. I see. All right. I, th I guess it's going to be the 13 on the side for the break. Seven might have been up a little high or something. I don't know yeah. why he didn't take it. He's going to probably just come back here and tad. And then probably play another stop shot right here on the six. He's playing at a pretty fast pace right now. I feel like he normally takes his time too. I don't. I don't really see him play fast too often. No. No, he's he's in dead punch right now. We haven't had a uh, too many side pocket break shots. This has been on the TV table. There's been a handful of them, but it was actually interesting because during Schmidt's match against uh, Ruslan, there was maybe four or five side oh, pocket really? side pocket breaks. Which was interesting. Were they all from Ruslan? No, most of them were from from John. There's what? a little bit of irony to that. I feel like somebody was just talking about how he never takes side pocket break shots. Yeah, I know, but it's you know sometimes you know Daniel tell you you got to take what the table gives yeah. you sometimes you know. John's play has get has gotten a lot. I mean, he's been a strong player for a long time, so don't misinterpret what I'm saying. He's gotten a lot stronger in the last few years. As strong as he was, he's gotten stronger. Yeah, he's certainly playing at a high level. Yeah. Now, when he started on these high run contests, like in Derby City, he would always start off with a side pocket break shot. Hmm. He would line the balls up, like he would put the cue ball almost adjacent to the, where the 13 is, mm -hmm. and just fire it in, and it would come right off the 13. I mean, wow. He wasn't pulling it or anything. And he would splatter them up. And now you wouldn't see him necessarily shooting for that. Albin Ocean on the table next to us, still in control, leading 89-8 to eight over Torsten Holman. far in, out in the country are we? <laughs> Just waiting. Uh, Alex is patiently waiting for Alvin to finish on the table next to us. So here's that side ball break. Side pocket break, as I should say, by Alex Pagulion. Wow, that was, that, was, that was a great result. You can get that pretty good.
few choices here. Start out here with the 14. I guess he's going to play the combination now. Maybe one thought he'd have a shot at the one. A clean shot at it. But he's, got, he's pretty much got to play the combination right now. He'll get a shot at the six later, and then he can break the cluster with the eight. And he's playing the one he just called the one. Here's a good look at the 10-1 combo, if that's what he's going for. Looks like he is. Yeah. That was nice. Oh, well, he didn't want to stop on the rail. Wanted to get straight on that. And held the ball for the eight. shot for Alex. Just hit this center ball roll drift nice. right down. Nice. Very nice. Of course, this changes the whole nature of the break with the 8 because you won't have the 10 there. Sure, yeah. Still got the 4 and the 15 tied up. Somebody just ran out on somebody else. It's like uh, Max Leisner. Is that what we're seeing? Teutcher. Teutcher. Just ran out. Oh, yeah, I I'm going to guess it was Teutcher that ran out because he has a huge smile on his face. It's nice to hear people clapping in the stands, Danny. Yeah. Usually I only hear applause when I leave a room. <laughs> <laughs> oh, who huh. are the opponents in that game with Teutcher? Who is he playing? Uh, the, the tall Russian, I believe. Oh, Ruslan. Ruslan. And actually, that's Les Lesner. Oh, uh, it was. Okay. Yeah, Marco Teutcher is on the, okay. on the next table down. And it looks like he's up 84 to 0 over al -Kady. Oh. It, it's brutal. These guys are all playing so well. It's a shame that they have. There has to be a loser. Well, it's almost, you know, I mean, you hate to say it like a coin flip, but these, all these guys are great players. Yeah. Alvin Ocean, 103 over Torsten Holman. See inches a little bit closer. Oh, boy, I didn't like that last shot. Yeah, he's oh, not going to like this either. No, he's not. Unless wow. he has... He might be able to make the eight. This is going to be tricky. Wagering there will be a, uh, a Ruslan ran 150 and out. Oh, there you go. Wow. So 150 over Max Leisner, who only, who got to 13. Ruslan, we just saw we saw his match uh, earlier on the TV table played very strong. Yeah. Against John Schmidt, but actually John really should have had that match. He had a shot on the six ball that he. Wasn't a tough shot, but behind the rack, back cut. Yeah, him. that back cut out of the jaws of the pocket. And you the figure if he ball. makes that, he's he's out. He, yeah. he wins the he wins that. So yeah. tough one, tough one for John. Was he trying to play this in the in the side? Wow, well, I'm not sure. In the corner, he's got to. I mean, if he has a yeah, because if you're nested on this ball, what, I mean, is there another shot here? That you, you can see, Danny? Nothing. I, I mean, you could play a safe of some sort, maybe. You, you just thin it and let the cue ball go two rails up to the center on the rail, maybe? Uh, I think he's playing it. it. Looks like he is. Yep. Nope. Oh, missed he it. missed it. Wow. Uh, he got away with it, though. I, think he, I don't think he left anything.
talking about the score here. Tough one there for Alex to land like that on the eight. Yeah, he, do he doesn't have, I just took a glance, he doesn't have the eight. And such, such a tough position here for Johnny. Thank you very much. I guess got uh, thank you, Gunga Din. <laughs> thank you. I have a microphone. I'm going to try and drink water without electrocuting myself here. shot there by Johnny he's left himself a shot here on the 11 he's queuing up center looks like he's going to try to oh I thought he was hitting I thought no, he was going to try to I bump into those I think it might have been a good time to try that depending on the angle here I think he can he make can, the two yeah, he'll bump the seven probably right in a good position boop oh, just like good that good speed perfect yeah, that, that doesn't do anything about the uh, uh, yeah, those two heckle and jekyll up there yeah the 4 and the 15 tied up on the right side of your screen here. Yeah, I think you're right. He should have tried to break them on the last shot, the prior shot. Made a little magic happen with that one. Now he's going to have to go up table here, I think. See, he could have had the same position with those three balls he was shooting at. Mm -hmm. But now he's got to shoot that, and he's got to figure out how to get back on the 15. Yeah, I think it's going to force him to go four to the eight and back over to the 15. Yeah, which is that's not problematic, too. Yeah, it's not optimal. Oh, well, he might be able to take the eight right now. He's looking yeah, down the barrel of it like it might go. I think that's the only shot he's he's got to have here. He's got to take the eight. Drills it. Perfect shot. Perfect angle to come back up above the 15 if he wants to. Yeah, you can see him looking there. Just got to be careful. Uh speed here. He doesn't want to go floating towards the side pocket. Just needs to get above it a little bit. Perfect draws a straight back. Go. He's going to have to he's going to have to pop this or draw this back. Yeah, I was gonna, he, he would actually have been a little bit better if it would have stopped about two or three inches sooner. He'd have more angle to That's a good shot. snap over. Great shot. He pulled it off. Yeah. So Yanni uh, getting a chance to put a run together here. You see Alex's high run of this match is going to be 47. Still playing for 84 balls, but he's going to be doing that from his chair until Yanni lets him back to the table. I'm double checking some tangent lines, picking his contact point on the rack, making sure he's got a precise target here. Wow. And he fired that. And 
He's got the four ball up the table. That's it. That's wild. You would figure that uh, that he'd have at least another shot or an easier shot than this after hitting him that hard. I mean, that's what you're hoping for when you hit him that hard. Yeah, absolutely. It's like they hit the, the rail and came back and clustered back up. And that 12-8 uh, <coughs> and eight ball you have in the bottom right-hand of your corner. I'm looking right down the, the lineup of those. It's, it's not going to go in the corner here. Jammed it. Jammed it. Wow, he's right. TV table still playing tough four days in. Well, he slugged that ball. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> had he rolled it, had he rolled it, he would have made it. Look at this shot. And you see after the the big break he had, <clears throat> the only shot he had left here was on the four ball. Just catches that point. Johnny turning the table over to Alex. There's a good chance uh, that Alex could put a real hurt on uh, Yanni right in this game right now. Just put so much distance between them. And he's got a good break shot. Got the four ball right under the 15. No real problems with clusters. That pull came up a little shorter than he wanted. Yeah, he certainly did. Kaidi's at zero right now, and Toishna's beating him uh, 13 to zero. Oh, well, Kaidi's at the table now. Looks like for the first time. So Ruslan's going to have the high run now, 150 and out. Wow. Good for him, the Russian. It's one of Russia's top players. Not the top player. wide open here for Alex. <clears throat> so five ball in great position for his break ball.
two for one there. Well, this is easy now. Three, two, fifteen. Actually, I I kind of like the fifteen, two, and the three better. Yeah, that's that's the one I'm thinking. Yeah. yeah especially because Alex is short, it, he can actually use the right angle on this three and come right down a little yeah. bit in line. Yeah, you're not moving the cue ball as much that sure. way. come right off the rail maybe a little bit here. <coughs> Alex has such a nice touch. Oh yeah. So miss miss by Johnny. Alex Pagulian back at the table. He's uh, just over halfway there. Gonna have to shoot seven. Yeah. Certainly easier shot seeing that he's nestled up against that ten ball. A little bit more clearance playing the seven. He's got that line of balls on the bottom. It's going to have to be dealt with. Just, just take a look to see where he wants to be. ball instead. Come back for the 10. Oh, he did take the seven. go by yeah it does I don't I kind of don't like breaking with that ball anyway because you got three you got four balls on the bottom and I don't want to drive any more balls down there right I think he was trying to come up to have a strong enough angle to be able to cut the 13 in and then hit the rack from the bottom so that the balls are coming away like you were saying you just saw him like pointing at the table, like he's frustrated that he didn't get the spot he wanted. There he goes. I think he's gonna play clean now. Come back under and put the fourteen from the bottom.
Okay, so he could break him from behind with the 13 right now. Could try to break him with the eight ball, shooting the eight ball. Yeah, that 13 is going to be a stretch. He's going to have to grab the rake. That's exactly what he does. is now locked up and it creates a whole new problem. It gets a good angle on this eight ball. It was perfect. Yeah, you can come right into the 610 if yeah. now if he likes. I like that play. <coughs> I like that shot. That's nice. I'm very glad I thought of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, he's got plenty of assurance balls here. So just got to nip. I mean, if he comes in full on the six here, bam, just like that. Oh, that, was, that was good. So it doesn't really want to be jacked up over the 10 playing the 4 or the 2 so I'm going to have to force to play the 9 here maybe unless he can good position to, to cue over that ball which I don't want really to do and he can so he'll take the 9 and just roll up for the 6 13 there, but I think he has to. I think you're right. I think it's the nine. You get a shot at the 10, then you pick up the 4. Yeah, you'll see him just roll this over. Perfect. Just rolls down. He's got a nice little angle here <clears throat> on that 14 ball. I think he'd like to be just a little bit straighter so he doesn't have to roll up, but th this one he has to pretty much be accurate. He'll hit this with a touch of inside, make sure he comes up past there's the, the problem. Mm. Yeah, there's the problem yeah. with that shot. It's very easy to overrun the position or undershoot it. Then you got to shuck and jive. Now he's got to come down table, right? Yeah. So he's going to hit this just below center. Oh, right? Yep. And whip around. Oh, no. Just, oh, what a beautiful shot. There Great shot think. there. I'm so glad he doesn't listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> running 131 right now? No, I guess not. He can't run 100. Hey, he's been at the table almost this whole entire time, Albin. He's at 131 plus yeah. half a rack, it looks like. Did Thorsten end his inning on a scratch? Could that, that would he add up? That would add up to... Oh, oh no. We're watching the score of the game with Oshin and Thorsten. To trail too much further. Uh, no shot. Whew. Wow, look at this. Yeah, that's really yeah. 
That's really amazing. Eight, so 139, so Ocean's at 140 now. 140 to 8. So he'll need these balls. Five balls after the next rack. 11. Really? Whew, that's such a tough shot right there. He's got a little space from the other camera. Uh, well, I don't know if you can tell from the other angle. No. Sticking my proboscis around the side of the computer screen. Like there's some space there. And in the pocket. Looks like he's got a little rail. I don't think so. And I don't think, I think he would have shot it already, to tell you the truth. Some it's tough, tough yeah. Like I mean, that. if you look at where the shadow lays, yeah. it does look a little bit past the pocket, but is it the point of the pocket or not? I mean, he's, he's looking. It's a tough shot anyway. I think he's going to play the pocket. Here we go. And he's going to go either into this point. I think. Into the soup. Yeah. Such a tough shot. Made it. Beautiful shot. Wow. Yeah, such a fine game. Well, you can see he hit just a, a little a little high and inside and just came right into that point. Get another look at that in a few moments. Too bad he didn't draw into it. It would have been the classic Jesus, Jesus shot. Intensio shot, absolutely. Yeah. I thought about it as soon as I saw it come up. I said, what would Jesus do? <laughs> draw right into this point. That's going to build your confidence after coming with a shot like that, don't you think, Danny? Yeah, I can't imagine that he's not getting out. Putting it out of reach. Well, uh, Al been at 145, so he did clear out that rack. So he's just five balls away from overtaking Thorsten Holman. He's putting a Thorsten on Thorsten. Yeah, he is. We saw him struggle early, Al, but... At least later rounds, he's certainly playing well. This is the right time for all these guys. I mean, everybody that's made it into that top eight is, you can just tell that they're all playing at a higher level. Which you got to love to see. I think it really just goes towards the mental fortitude of these players. So, I'm sorry, I was, I was doing all that whoa, whoa, because I was watching the other table. I'm sorry, he crushed that right. Yeah, it's a little scary there with the cue ball. Back on our table, I'd say the 15 might go underneath the 13. I don't think he's going to play for that, though. So he's either got the 10 or the uh, 10 or the 12 right now. He's going to just try to bump this uh, ball up just a little bit. Yeah. There you go. That's his break shot. Wondering what, what they're talking about. Yeah.
I got a button over here. I can hit and it'll turn on myself. Oh, no. I'm going back on. Alex, uh, over 100 now. 103. for the one. So I'll just trail up here for the five ball. I believe he'll use the eight ball. Shot if he has uh, I think the eight here. is gonna be the break shot, no? Oh maybe. Maybe the eight. Yeah, I think three is the all three close. is close, yeah you're right. Comes up for the three, two rails from the five. Perfect. He'll leave an angle on this. He'll just cut this in and come to the rail back out center ball just, just below center to miss the eight here perfect beautiful out Seven to Johnny seeking in fourteen forty three balls for Alex to the next round. And Alex needs uh, three three racks and a ball. So the question remains, will Alex ever have an easy shot after a break? <laughs> ever. You, you think a lot of that has to do with his height coming in there, trying to trying to get into the to the stack there? No. I mean, it just, uh, no. It just seems like he's not getting enough power there. No, nah, he's just getting bad for luck. That's all. Yeah. Damn, he's this 10, this 10 open balls, really. I mean, he's good. Yeah, he's going to have to take the 14 ball here on the side, it looks like. when they fire him in the side like that. Hey guys, this is the last match. Uh, if you're tuned in to the stream, this is the last match for this evening. And then we'll be back uh, tomorrow to close it out. It'll be uh, what's top four, top four tomorrow. So two matches, I believe. Matches on the TV table, I'm sure. Very nice break there. Yeah. Assuming he clears this, he'll need 29 balls, and I just don't see him giving up the table playing he's poised the uh, ski of course I guess you can argue that since he did bank a shot earlier with when he didn't have to Are you making this too and trying to run into some of these? No, I don't want to run into anything here. I want to.
try and figure out a way to not run into things. Maybe he can get shot in a minute and have play the two, clear that pocket, and get a shot at the 10 and bump the 15. Guess he's going to run into them now. That'll put the brakes on it. Then shoot the 10. He's juicing it, so he's going to go around that line of balls. Yeah. He does that so well, really fast. He the ball well. Absolutely perfect. <laughs> now the 15 becomes a break shot. 13 is the key ball. And you can connect the dots from here. Very beautifully played there by Alex. Keeping the cue ball off the rail. Mm -hmm. Making sure he's not shooting anything from the rail. Alex's game is just uh, so methodical. Of course, Alex, one of the arguably probably one of the best one pocket players. Let's face it, he's great at all games. Yeah, really. Too far, I think he wanted to play seven. This ain't bad either. Keeps it nice and concise, short, simple. Gets himself the uh, 13 ball there for his key ball. Looking good. Perfect. Past his previous high run in this match. He was at 47. He's now on a run of 55. <clears throat> you can see there, uh, both times Yanni was able to get to the table, he wasn't able to put together at least 10 bowls. What's all this information just came up on the screen? What am I looking at? So the stats uh, from the match. Wow. And you can see the offensive play index, very similar to the TPA for Alex 968. Almost playing perfect. Uh, something's wrong. He's got an easy shot. <laughs> 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 yeah, it, all, it only took, what, like nine racks? Wow. We have Roy's basement on the stream. Rooting for Alex. One of their thoroughbreds. Thank you for tuning in, Roy, for your continued support. I just got a message from one of the uh, viewers saying, bring milk and eggs. Oh, that's from my wife. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> think about that combination right you're He's looking at the it. I mean it either goes or it doesn't and if it does go off a little bit there Easy. close enough <laughs> he's, called, he's, he's the called the nine, nine. he's going to play the three nine combo uh, here Just make sure he gets a shot here afterwards oh he tried to do it right now Think he's gonna take another swing at it with the 14. 
I don't think I don't think so. I don't think he's going to. Oh yeah, with a fourteen, yeah, maybe he plays a fourteen in the in the corner there and then comes into the to that twelve maybe just to get it out of the way. Because this combo is really off. Oh, but he's called it. I think it's so close to the pocket that without slamming this, it'll go. Yeah. No, he had a good. Played a three ball now. Played a three ball. I don't really think you have to play the three ball. I think you can work around on position. think he's going to either play the three or the two or he's looking to see how the six is coming off when he plays the two not unreasonable he doesn't have to hit this super hard either i don't, I don't think he's got to make oh, sure he gets it. separation yeah that's Ooh, yeah man, that worked out well for him it did it didn't have to but it did Once that five ball is out of the way, the four does go by the ten into the corner pocket. No. Obviously, there's a the side pocket there available as well, so. And he can go up the table, pick up the uh, 13 and the seven, and then the, then the five. Thirteen ball for the seven. Take the seven ball here. Get himself back into position. Now it gets a little bit easier for him. The baby rack now. Were the other games all blowouts? The other three games? Uh, no. The um, well, the first match, Darren played extremely well against Sean Wilkie. That was pretty much a blowout. And then Schmidt Ruslan was close early most of the time, you know. And then uh, we thought Schmidt was going to run that out, and then he caught missed that back cut, allowed Ruslan to come back and, and finish it off. I actually meant the games from this round. Yeah, because like uh, Homan and uh, Ocean is eight to one fifty. There's another scorecard down there. I don't know who Al Qaeda was playing, but he's still playing. It's one forty-five to nine over there. Oh, he's playing Marco. Yeah, Marco Toitcher. I think Marco might be out on this shot. And Alex just shot. Yeah, that's a good point. Maybe all these uh, all these matches were blowouts. I can't read the names on that one scorecard that's right there on the bench, but oh, that's, someone uh, had 13. Yeah, that was uh, Max Leisner that was, and Ruslan. Ruslan ran 150 out yeah. to win. For yeah, so, yeah, I think you're right. That qualifies as a blowout. Yeah, yeah. for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, looks like the highest score count out of all those three games was 13 uh, from the losing player. Wow. You didn't know better. You would have thought it was one of my games from this tournament. <laughs> Well, all of my games from this <laughs> tournament. I heard you were locked in pretty good with Darren during your match. I had a good game against Darren. I had a run against him. And I, f I fouled the ball. And 
but I was playing good in general. But I, I had I caught a little stroke, so there was a sign of life. <laughs> Still a little pulse in there. Yeah, it's not enough. A little bit of tougher shot than Alex would have liked here. But it's a perfect. No, oh, yeah. Yeah, he he got out of line on one ball here, and that led to this. So I don't I don't think he played it as incisively as he could have. But there's a lot of pressure here, and he doesn't want to let uh, Yanni back into the match before he learns how to pronounce his name correctly. So, <laughs> so depending on what Alex likes here, he could probably draw back here, or he can go forward. I think he's going down and up. Hit this with a tad inside. Oh, they lost the ankle. Yeah, he did. Wow. He needs 15 balls to get to the final four. And he has more than the other players got. Oh, look at that. He did break the record. So I think he's going to follow this and try and drive one ball out of the bottom. Very soft. Watch this. Soft. See what I meant? <laughs> <laughs> See what I meant? <laughs> That's what I meant to say. He's going to slam this. And yeah, so that is soft for some people. Yes. You know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Teutcher hit four break shots on me. I don't know how he didn't scratch on four of them. Wow. <laughs> I think the ball was just right within. Ah. So <laughs> close to scratching on four break shots. Yeah, he, he plays very aggressive, but, man, I really like his game. Uh, just, I saw him first time out there at the U.S. Open in Vegas. Yeah, he had a match early on the TV table, and played great certainly having a good tournament here is he swinging around these balls going three real yeah, position he may oh yeah yeah oh good shot So does he play the 14 and then shoot the 15 and come out to break with the three? Does he play the th or the four rather? Does he play the four and draw back? Bottom. Yeah, he's, he certainly has a lot of options here. 14 ball, not a great angle. I wonder if the 11 goes by the nine and 14. Oh, he's gonna. I think if the four, if the eleven went, he would have shot it already. Yeah. I'll tell you the truth. Pick up the fifteen first. Looks like he's going to try and break with the 11, but I like it. Oh, the 10 ball goes. That's what he's playing for. 10 ball does pass the three. This will give you a good angle here of the breakout. Ball here, just a little low, low outside. Come right in the seven. Damn, just like that. Got a good spread there. Seven's close to the eight, but makeable. What do you do now? I mean, he's about to play the combo. The two, f he's look, oh, two five it looks like. Eleven balls a little far out. He's got to play the combo now. Oh, maybe.
maybe the 13 ball goes by. Six ball went by. Great oh. shot. Which he doesn't need. Well, I mean, he needs to make the 15th ball. He needs all eight balls. Right. But he doesn't need it to be a great shot. Exactly. the seven eight that's over there tied up on the rail comes up playing nicely here for the 13. There, he would he would like to try to get a little bit more straighter on that seven ball. I mean, I'd most like if he could get, if both the seven and the eight go by, which they do. We'll save them for the end. Yeah, just save it for the end. Energy here. I was thinking the same <laughs> thing. I don't want to take the seven here. You know, it's just I mean, that's it's a lot harder shot. You know, you take the three, eleven, two, and then leave the seven, eight for last. Oh boy! Well, boy, that was exciting. Nice shot. Let's get here. You just play the two, and then yeah, come two rails, but right? Yeah, but you, you know you always oh, want to risk stretch it now. Just getting the ball. Hit that red thing. Oh, huh. I think you play the red thing now. Yeah, I think you're right. All right, I refuse to comment on the last three shots here. This is getting out of hand. <laughs> <laughs> First place, I'm never right. And second place, uh, well, now he's played the first perfect. place. Yeah. Let's see, right. <laughs> see number one. That's it. You got to rack them. <laughs> well, all right. Guys, thanks. It's been a pleasure. Oh, it was great having you in the booth. Absolutely. Danny Baruti, thank you so much. Thank you. It was a lot of fun. Hope to see you again soon. Nice, Absol meet, nice meeting you guys, too. Absolutely. Nice meeting you as well. Well, there you have it, guys. Last match uh, of the evening, Alex Pagulion, 150 over Thanks for the Johnny. Oh, absolutely. Siegenen.